Well, let's follow up on the shocking news we talked about last week that has divided the internet and probably the, the host of this show, which is fine because I created a, I cloned your voice and I have a, uh, a, a, <laughs> a Brian to agree with me. My name is Brian Stockton and I am an Elon Musk sycophant. You're absolutely right, James. Yeah, so I can have a good conversation now with you that I find more satisfying when I talk about how Elon's crazy. Um, right. So, yeah, it's uh, some people are, are very shocked and some people are reverse engineering what happened and trying to find an excuse for it, like uh, Sandy Monroe uh, and other people, and it just doesn't make any sense to me. Brian, I'm a good judge of character. One of my many talents, and I have a lot of them, is judging character. But like I say, I'm usually better doing it when I'm drunk. But I'm a good judge of character. And I've, uh, I judged Elon a long time ago when he um, started hitting on a female uh, interviewer during, uh, at the factory. And I thought, ah, oh, this guy's unhinged. And I, I sort of put it together with all the traits that I know and the world of people and what they'll end up acting like. And he's done that. We've argued on this show that his craziness will or will not affect the future of the transition and Tesla itself. I think I'm right, and I'm on the side of he's affecting the transition. And of course, I found some other people who agree. But in New York, there's a ride sharing there with Model 3s, and they're desperately in need of superchargers, which were about to get built. And guess what? They're they're not doing them anymore because there's the, the entire, let's remind people what happened. I, I know what happened. He, um, he was doing layoffs at Tesla because they've stopped selling cars, maybe partially because of him being a a bad person. I've, I've encountered more and more people who will not drive around a Tesla. So anyway, uh, he fired um, the head of the supercharging thing uh, and her entire 500 member team to spite her because she didn't do what he said. And that is unhinged and is not a good idea. It's not how people get rid of departments. Uh, you don't leave utilities and uh, partners out in the uh, cold, not knowing what's going on. That's what he did. And I think it was my own analysis of his psyche is that it probably made it worse because she was a woman, because he's very toxic on Twitter. Uh, male toxic toxicity it comes out of him, oozes out of him. This is what um, Tom at the uh, Batteries Included uh, podcast had to say. The timing is so nuts that it's almost as if Elon just wanted to throw a hand grenade into the industry. Sure, come on and sign all these agreements. And as soon as everybody just begins to join, just boom, you know, and, and like, you know, that, that's why I, I said earlier, if, if Tesla wanted to do this, if this was their plan to be a to ma a manufacturer or to just get the supercharger network to a certain location and then say, okay, we've done it. This is how you do it, guys. Now it's on you to invest and do this. Okay, I can I, I wouldn't agree with it, but I can understand it. But the way this was done with just 500 jobs gone and all of these partners so like just left hanging, not knowing who to contact, that that's what made makes you leads you to believe this wasn't planned. Like this wasn't, this is what we're gonna do. This was Elon, you know, just you know, having a hissy fit and just firing everybody without thinking the the full consequences through. That's uh, Tom Maloney, A State of Charge. He's got a YouTube channel. He also does it with uh, Kyle Connor with uh, Out of Spec Reviews. Got a large organization going there. They both do extensive coverage of supercharging and charging. And they have connections to the companies that are doing it. They have a very intimate uh, knowledge of the technology of what works and doesn't work and down to the, uh, you know, the smallest part of those superchargers. And this is Fred from Electric. He is the, um, the editor-in-chief at Electric. This is what he said on the Electric podcast this week. What Elon did this week, I think it's anti-mission. This firing of the superchargering team, I cannot reconcile it with the mission. So it is, it is absolutely uh, surprising in the worst way possible. This firing is going to result, I think, undeniably in... Uh, at least significant slowdown in fast charging deployment in North America, probably major slowdown if uh, worst case scenario, and that's going to result in fewer EV cells globally because as Elon himself said, the biggest driver of Tesla cells 
EV cells is supercharger deployment, service center deployment. Those are the biggest. Right? If people have a service center near them, store near them, and they have supercharging station in between where they need to go and where they live, that's what makes their, their buying decision easier. And now we're going to have less of that. And we're going to have more supercharger wait time, more issues. It's just, it seems like an unhinged move and in a long series of indication that led that way. So it seems like an unhinged move to me too. He wrote in an email that if you do not do what you're told, what I tell you to do, this is what's going to happen to you. I'm going to fire you and everyone you love and everyone who has been working hard. 500 people, Brian. It's just, it makes no sense. Uh, it doesn't seem like it makes sense. Yahoo Finance writes, plenty of investors are blaming Musk for the company's wandering vision, saying he's alienated buyers and tanked the car maker's reputation with his bizarre political outbursts and fixation on autonomous driving, all at the expense of basic services for Tesla drivers, like a reliable charging network. Brian, I was on the cusp as a Chevy Bolt GM guy with a car of getting my connector and access to the supercharger network. Well, that's gone. At least for now, maybe we, if we were, because these are the people who were working on that being compatible. They're gone and they're not being replaced immediately. And I was so close. I was so close to being able to go on a trip this summer. And, and if my charger network wasn't working, I could have went hundred feet to the right and used a Tesla because they're often together here. And um, it would have been security for me. I'm disappointed. I'm, I'm disappointed. I kept it, you know, because they've opened up these charging networks to all the other companies and the other companies ostensibly are going to need superchargers and the superchargers are going to, some of them are going to fill up. Some of them are going to become congested. We're going to need more of them. And they are the only people who are doing it right. That's the one thing that Tesla had going for that you could not argue with. They just throw it out the window. And I'm, I'm unhappy about that. Now, Ioni, Ioni, I think it's the, the, you know, there was this conglomeration of different EV makers like Hyundai and uh, GM, they're starting this big charging network, the seven auto manufacturers, and they're going to have chargers by the end of this year. But the people who are running that are the people who are running the other third-party chargers, which were crap. So I don't have much faith. We need a big charging network to come and expand and be reliable and make sense and, you know, have the understanding. But they've, they've had 15 years of experience doing this and finding out where the right places are to put these superchargers and um, and how to do them quickly. They've figured out manufacturing of them. You know, they, they prefab them in a factory on a concrete slab and take those out to the work site. It does take time to set up a charger. There's a lot of utility interconnection that has to go on. It can take a couple of years. I'm worried that this is just one more thing and the oil companies are just having a good laugh that it's another, you know, iron rod in the spokes of progress. Well, I don't have any particular insight. I don't have any special knowledge on this, so I don't really have an opinion on it. Wait, it you does do, seem you like do, it's Brian, a, you do. Elon Musk has gone insane and it will delay the transition <laughs> to electric vehicles. James, Thank you. you're so smart. Thank you. Well, that's very kind of you. How